So in the, in the world of secure design and architecture, uh, we have a number of security principles out there that we all try to follow, right? Least privilege, compartmentalization. There's another one called keep it simple, this principle. How many of you guys have heard that principle? Pretty much everybody, it's good. Um, this is a principle that we use all the time. The cool thing about it is you can apply it to anything you do, right? Whether that's remediating a vulnerability or, you know, we come in and people have design flaws that they're trying to fix. So you have to refactor the design. Uh, and a lot of times you can just make the design simple or simpler to address that particular issue. Uh, you can apply this principle to process methodologies um, or even just implementing new features in code that you're working on day to day. Uh, we recently applied this principle to threat model. Not only simplifying how we think of threat models, but also the process behind how you arrive at a threat model and use it. Um, <clears throat> organizations come to us asking really tough questions. Um, they want to know if they're doing enough. They want to know if code review is the right answer for them. They want to know if, if pin testing is the right answer. Even with code review, they want to know if they should go the automated route, whether they should go the manual route. Um, in addition to that, you know, these organizations have thousands of applications. They, they literally have too much code to look at. Right? So we, we need a way to prioritize what we're going to go after uh, and understand uh, how we might be vulnerable to particular attacks uh, and then prioritize how we go about testing for those attacks and remediating them. It's a fundamental risk management problem. In addition to that, they come to us uh, and express that they're experiencing pain points uh, or, or, or pitfalls, right into pitfalls. Um, you know, a lack of understanding of how they should view a threat. Uh, or they explain to multiple people within organizations think of threats differently, right? Um, they also explain that their current process is heavy on documentation and resource intensive, uh, and they, they struggle with actually producing actionable results. One of the key outputs of a threat model is, in my mind, a security test plan, right? You arrive at a threat model based on possible potential attacks and particular areas of risk within your, within your software design uh, and, and you drive a security test plan and it's, you can then focus on specific test uh, scenarios. Uh, whether that warrants a pin test at a particular piece of your, of your software system. Uh, because usually you're not just dealing with one application. Usually your, your enterprise business type apps are huge monolithic app applications. We have multiple systems talking to each other. You have to figure out where the risk lies and what kind of assessment te techniques you're going to apply to those various parts. This is all threat model. <coughs> Um, one, of the, one of the challenges we, hear, we have here with the threat modeling problem itself is it requires multiple perspectives from different people within your organization. How many, how many people here are architects? How many developers do we have? How many are, are what I would call owners, you know, owner requirements or product owners? What about infrastructure guys? A couple. You guys are all here for a reason. You want to know about threat modeling. All of your perspectives are important, and we must all come together to what I call a threat modeling roundtable and present your views. It's the only way that, that we found to produce effective results, and results that you can present to the CIO level in a way that they can understand what the risk is and, and how to translate a technical risk into a business risk and understand what the impact of that is to the business. <coughs> Your developers, so just think about these, these different stakeholders here. Uh, and, and in light of you know, enterprise class applications where you just don't have one application, you have multiple apps talking to each other. Developer perspectives, you know, single developers are working on isolated components. So that's their view. Uh, architects are good at, at choosing the frameworks that we want to put in place and figuring out how to make these systems connect and, and work together, right? Uh, or extending them to be very extended. Uh, defenders are good at deployment models. They think about you know, where the holes might be in the network and how to secure that infrastructure. Owners ultimately own the products. You know, we have risk officers that get involved here who own um, you know, management of the assets. Uh, you have requirements types of owners. These stakeholders are good at different, at different things. Uh, we also have breakers, right? How many, how many pen testers? You guys are, you know, obviously an important part of the threat modeling process. You guys are good at breaking things. In fact, 
Rome is too good. We're finding too many vulnerabilities these days, and developers can't keep up and remediate. So we need perspective from all of these stakeholders. And what we've done is we try to put together a framework. And we've been talking about threat modeling. My colleague John Stevens in the back for, for a number of years. We tried to, to simplify a process and build a framework of certain deliverables and artifacts that can bring these stakeholders together and have a conversation, allow them to have a conversation and interpret the results. So, at the risk of going down a rabbit hole here, um, we have to understand what a threat is. Just for the basis of this talk and for this framework, we have to fundamentally define what a threat is. Um, unfortunately, our industry, can't, our industry just can't agree to terminology. In this framework, we, we say that a threat is the malicious agent. It's someone or something that's trying to do something bad to your software. Or make your software do things it's not supposed to be able to do. Right? It's, uh, it, it's someone, or, or you know, it might be malware, for instance, that, that's trying to validate your security policy. Some people think of a threat as crossing scripting. Others think of it as denial of service. Uh, in our view, it's the person. It's, it's the thing, you know, uh, inflicting, trying to inflict damage and harm against the system. Threats, when you think of them, it's useful to profile them. I call it profiling. Uh, they have different skills, right? And you can relate threats to the types of attacks they might try. Right? So if you look at a particular attack that cross that scripting, well, uh, could, a, could a script kitty achieve that? Um, to, to achieve some, some sort of uh, another type of attack where they need knowledge of the working internals of the system. Developer type knowledge. You know, developers have been known to switch organizations and go from one you know, to a competitor. Um, it's also useful to think about levels of access. You know, to, to be successful and exploit a vulnerability, what kinds of access do they need on the network? Uh, would they need to see internal traffic or just external traffic? Maybe a combination of the two. They need certain roles and permissions, right? And resources. Well, what kinds of tools might they need to successfully, successfully carry out an attack? Thinking about all of these, all of these attributes of a threat kind of sets the stage for the types of attacks <laughs> that that, we're, that we might care about or, or try to test for. Uh, in, a, in a mobile architecture, this is kind of a, a theme for the rest of this talk here. We have we have some sort of banking application. And uh, you know they're moving to a mobile architecture, so they want to reuse a lot of that banking infrastructure and a business logic and just add a mobile channel. But when you fundamentally attach something to an existing architecture, your threats change. Obviously, uh, one threat that comes up is the, the device user who's malicious, right? He's got he's holding the phone or your tablet um, and using the application. He might try to do bad things. From a skills perspective, you might go to jailbreak that device, right? That changes. Um, you know, what, what type of attacks they might try. Uh, level of access, they have access to the device, the app's browsers, your native application which you can pull to the phone, the device SDK, which gives them a lot of power. Uh, from a resource perspective, you know, they obviously can use disassemblers to reverse engineer the software. Um, they might install proxies to enable certain types of opportunity for them. So this kind of sets the stage to, to begin to think about the types of attacks that threats um, may try. While we're still on terminology, it's useful to kind of break down an attack. You know, what's, what makes an attack an attack? Um,